is a sentence divided into? What are the names that we give to these parts? Is there any particular formation of these sentences? Are there any exceptions to forming the sentences? All this in today's class. Hello everyone. Our topic for today, subject and predicate. A sentence is divided into two parts. The first part is called as the subject and the second part is called as the predicate. The subject is the naming part of a sentence. That means in a sentence, what are we talking about or whom are we talking about? Is it a person, place, animal or thing? So the noun or pronoun that is there in a subject, that is called as the naming part. The predicate part is what we call as the telling part. The predicate gives us information about what the subject that is the noun or the pronoun is or what it does. And most importantly, the predicate contains the verb part of any given sentence. A subject can either be a singular noun or just a single noun also. It could be the name of a person or it could just be an uh, animal or it could be a non-living thing or it could just be the single pronoun. And it can also be two words, more than two, anything. And the predicate, of course, has no limit to it because it gives us information about the subject. Let us look at a few examples now to see which is the subject part and which is the predicate part. The yellow highlighted part is the subject and the rest is the predicate. So let's look at it. So as you can see, Faran. Just one single word, that's a noun. The men and women. You can also see that the men and women are more than one or two words. But we are talking about them in the sentence. And it's very easy to find out which is the subject, which is the predicate. Ask whom are we talking about or what is the sentence talking about. The other way is we got the verb in the sentence. Like for example, in the sentence, the men and women are working in the fields. Which is the verb in this? Are working. Ask the question. Who are working? So what do you get? You get the subject part easily. The men and women. So the rest is the predicate part. I am not feeling well. Whom are we talking about? I. Just a single word subject. That is I. That is the first person pronoun. Or you ask the question to the verb. Am not feeling well. Who is not feeling well? I. Next, Reshma's sister is a doctor. Let's ask the verb. Who is a doctor? Reshma's sister. Now, pay a little more attention to sentence number five. The house with the red door belongs to my grandfather. Now, this is the place where sometimes mistakes occur that you'll just take the house. But we are not talking about any house. What are we talking about in this sentence? We are talking about the house with the red door. So all this is the subject part. If we ask the question to the verb belongs. What belongs to your grandfather? So we say the house with the red door. So sometimes it also contains more than two, three words. That is why you have to first of all ask yourself. What are we talking about? Or whom are we talking about? Or ask a question to the verb. Now, as you've seen in all these, the, all the highlighted part, that is the subject, that was all the first part. And even in the sentence, it came before the predicate. Sometimes there are exceptions also to the formation of the subject and predicate to their order. Let's look at them now. Sometimes the sentence does not begin with the subject. For example, Hiding behind the trees were the decoids. Decoids, daku. Now, we could have also said the decoids were hiding behind the trees. But when we want to make something more exciting, something more interesting, creating suspense, then we just put the subject part at the end. So you can imagine hiding behind the trees were the decoids. And similarly, in the valley, you must have entered a valley and what did you see then? In the valley was a beautiful palace. Or sometimes the subject is not there only in the sentence. 
but it is understood that the subject is there. For example, meet me after an hour. In this sentence, there is no subject, but it is understood or what we say, it is implied. When I say meet me after an hour, I'm saying you meet me after an hour. So the subject you is hidden, but it is there. Now this we mostly use while talking. Put it in the bag. Whom am I telling? I'm telling you. Put it in the bag. So you put it in the bag, but you is the implied subject over there. So this was all today in our class of subject and predicate. And we also have a detailed long video of this, which you can see. Till we meet again with another new topic, which we will be covering in nearly six minutes. Till then, it's goodbye.